to see you. We're here to talk about how to run an amazing all hands meeting. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. My name is Michelle Benjamin. I'm the VP of Marketing at Scoot, joined today by Ed Stevens, our CEO and founder, and also the person who runs all of our weekly all hands meetings. So who best to talk about it? Welcome, Ed. Hi. How's everyone doing today? All right. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about the problem with all hands meetings. We obviously already know many of those since we're here to talk about how to solve them. And we're also going to be talking about measuring ROI, which I don't think, Ed, is that something people actually talk about for all hands? I feel like success of an all hands is hard. So, Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to go over some of these things because now that work is more spread out, people are hybrid, remote, it's just hard to get a really good energetic all hands meeting going. Um, and we're going to go through some of those problems, but you really want to think about your all hands meeting as an investment because it takes a, a big chunk of your company's time. I, I was doing the math just a few minutes ago. If you have 250 people going to your all hands and your average salary is $40 an hour, which would be probably typical in a, in a, in a, corporation today, um, that's going to be $10,000 per all hands meeting for a one hour meeting, 10,000 wow. bucks. That's right. A lot. And so you want to think about how do you measure success of that? How do you know you're doing a good job? And is it really driving the outcomes that you want? And then, um, yeah. And we're also going to give you some great tips on how we and clients and other companies take this opportunity and, and, don't just have a go through the motions all hands, but really drive something that is amazing. All right, let's do it. So why do we do all hands meetings? Well, there's really two reasons. Um, the first one is more practical, and that is you've got people all over the world, all over the country, and you're trying to get them to row in the same direction. And we call that alignment, right? So what's our strategy? How did we do against it? What are we doing next quarter? And we look at the results. We can, we can sort of uh, think about performance and get everybody to, to know what success means and go achieve it. But that is just kind of the, you know, the business side of it. When you get to engagement, that's where we start thinking about energy, passion, trust, you know, the kinds of things that can really differentiate us from competitors. And we know that when there's no engagement, it's people might know what they're supposed to do, but are they going to really apply themselves? So you have to have that sustaining energy that comes from engagement. And you also have to have the business alignment that's also important. Yeah, they're definitely both very important to having a healthy company culture. So what's the problem with all hands meetings today? I mean, there are so many, it's, it, it, it's almost hard to, um, to list them. The, the first thing is here we have a great picture of a, of a uh, in-person all hands meeting. And, you know, look at what's happening here in this picture. We've got people raising their hands. They're looking at each other. They're smiling. Look at the people in the front row are turned around, looking at those who are talking or engaged. And, you know, we know that when these people arrived, they were talking with each other next to their seatmates. We know that there's networking happening. The problem with the all hands meeting today is that it's a one to many presentation that's boring. Mm -hmm. And that's the primary problem with it, right? So when we think about, um, engagement. That's the real problem. It's presenting the information for alignment is really easy to do and great on Zoom, Microsoft Teams, pick any platform you want. But when you have all those cameras off, I mean, we see now, what's, what's the percentage that we see? I think it's like over 80% of people will have yep. their cameras off in an all hands meeting based on what our market uh, sort of research has told us. So that's a problem. It's a huge problem. Imagine if you went to your in-person all hands meeting and everyone was in the meeting like this or their heads down or, you know, it was just like not talking to anyone. It would be depressing. And yeah. that's the issue. For sure. 
And I mean, from the presenter's point of view, nobody wants to be that person talking into the void. I'm sure that's not something you enjoy doing, Ed. No, I, I invented this platform, so I would never have to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I mean, employee disengagement has so many impacts. We kind of touched on some of these, but, you know, Ed, what do you think? Yeah, about I this? mean, you, you have a reduced productivity would be right at the top of that list. Uh, that means your salespeople are going to generate less sales. They're going to talk to customers in a way that you don't want them to because they're just not feeling really up, not feeling energetic, mm -hmm. overall trust. You know, business is moving so fast. I mean, just think about what's happening with AI and you know, the economy, new technologies. It can be really overwhelming. And you know, how do you structure an organization that can talk about really, really difficult things and the ramifications of them? And that's trust. Trust is really, really hard to build. And you know, when you have all that stuff, the business gets more successful. And then you get reduced absenteeism and reduced um, sort of departures as well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's a lot of negative financial impacts to unengaged employees. And our all hands meetings are, you know, one of the biggest culprits in, in continuing that disengagement. For sure. So here's the big question. How do we measure success in an all hands? Yeah, and we put return on investment because it is an investment. And you know, that's the important thing to really bear in mind here is that, you know, it's a um, $10,000 investment if you have 250 people. Probably for most companies, it's a bigger investment than that when you consider the preparation that goes into it, the decks that are created, and all the follow-on conversations. And mm -hmm. so when I think about measuring success, there are a variety of ways to do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to break off and we're going to ask you to just Talk with the group that you're in, inside the scoot room. So first things first, you're in a scoot room. You got here. You didn't know what to expect, most of you. And you're in a bubble. That bubble will move. And it will move based on if you hold down your arrow keys. Okay? And if you find a message telling you that your group is too big, then just move to another section where you see a smaller group of people and join that group. So we want to be in groups of about six or seven people and not any bigger than that. Okay. And the way that you do that, again, is by holding down your arrow key. And you can look at the map that's in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. And you can sort of see where you are. And you can see where other people are in the room. And then you can use the zoom button in the lower left-hand corner of your screen to kind of zoom in and out to make sure your group is the right size on your screen so you can see everybody. And then when we get back, we're going to have that snappy jazz music on again. But if for some reason you don't like it, you can turn it off at the bottom of the screen or you can change the volume of it. Okay. Now, you don't have to have your camera on. But normally what happens when we do these webinars is that over the course of the webinar, more cameras get put on. And so at the same bottom of your screen, you'll see those icons for camera and microphone. And there's a little arrow at the corner of those where you can kind of pick your microphone and pick your camera and um, you know go ahead and and join this conversation because that's what we're here to do is engage and learn how to engage and cameras on is one way to do that of course you don't have to have it on if you don't want to or can't but uh, it's something that is a lot more fun so we're going to jump out of this we're going to do just five minutes and all we're going to do is we're going to ask you to if you just go to the next slide all we're going to do is we're going to ask you um, how you measure success in your all hands meetings. You might not do it. So come up with some ideas. Maybe some of you do measure success and, and we're going to come back. We're going to ask a few people to jump in. Uh, you can also, when we're done with this exercise, you can jump in and uh, type in your answers or type in what you have. And we're going to write a few in here and share this back with everybody because we want you to get a great return on that investment that you're putting into your all hands meeting. Cool. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes.
Perfect. So we were hoping that we could hear from some people. Uh, I think we have push to speak on. So there should be a button in the bottom of your screen that says push to talk. And when you do that, you can talk to the whole room. So we'd love to hear verbally. I'm, I'm, I can take some notes up here um, or we can see it in the chat. So what did someone, does anyone want to share their thoughts from the group? How do you measure ROI? Anybody? Otherwise, I'll share what my group talked about. Well, I had some interesting conversation with Martha Engel. If uh, Martha, if you don't mind kind of sharing your thoughts to, with the whole group, that would be great. There we go. Okay, sorry. I'm, we spent the first couple of minutes just like, am I, can everyone hear me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, great, great. Sorry. Um, yeah, we were doing a bunch of like bubble bouncing for the first few minutes. So sorry, we didn't get to, to a lot of the meat right away. But some of the things that we uh, talked about was um, being able to measure um, what the employee experience has been like through employee engagement surveys. So we take that feedback on communication from the company and then where we see the all hands meeting coming up um, as a good point of contact and where that information is disseminating. Um, and then also being able to measure the actions of our employees. So if we're saying, hey, we need everyone to wear you know, purple tomorrow and we you know, engage with our employees and we see where they're actually showing up and delivering on that. Or more importantly, here's what our goals are and here's how those goals should be realized and cascaded through your respective departments and in your own individualized goals. Um, those are where we can see where the communication is, is reaching the intended audience. Let me ask you a question about that. How do you find that balance between, you know, like, wear purple, but then, you know, what if somebody doesn't want to, how do you, how do you treat that? Yeah. So it was a totally fictitious example, <laughs> um, but what we did do um, last year, so we launched our first um, LGBTQ plus uh, ERG. And so we had a color challenge where we had an opportunity and put it out there very much as an option, not as a mandate that to say, hey, if you can get your team together, your team is assigned purple, your team is assigned red, the, the greater number of attendees you can have in that color with that background, uh, the more points you can get, and then you can make a donation to a charity of your choice. So mm -hmm. um, we, it has to be employee interest led, um, yeah. and, and that's where you get that engagement. Um, doesn't work the other way around generally. Awesome. For sure. Okay, right. anyone else? Yeah, I, we also had uh, Isaac from Canada kind of sharing with us some some thoughts. Isaac, do you mind kind of speaking to the group? You might be muted. You just have to push the button at the bottom of the screen. Push to talk. Yeah, we have the push to talk enabled so that, you know, in a big room with like 500 people, you you wouldn't get um, people talking over each other. And we know that if they push at the bottom of the screen, the red button, then we know that they're um, ready to speak and um, it eliminates all the background noise. So in a big all hands meeting, we use push to speak functionality in order to control that um, flow without the slow speed of like raising your hand and asking questions that way. So. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, a couple of things that I heard in my group was Pulse Polls was popular along with surveys. And then also someone said they can measure the success by did we get through every item on the agenda? And if you mm -hmm. complete the agenda, you were successful. I heard the same thing. Did we complete the agenda is the measure of success. Yeah, well, that's the alignment piece, right? So mm -hmm. did we get all the alignment done that we needed to get done? Yep. All right. Go ahead, Alfie. Hey, hey yeah, uh, I guess just a, a kind of building on what others have said when it comes to the employee, employee, employee engagement survey and the kind of post-event survey. Um, it's, yes, you can survey about the event itself, but then there's also that longer term kind of surveying as well. And one of the one of the benefits that we see for our all hands is that building trust of the of the leadership team. And that's not something that you're going to change after one all hands. That's something that you're going to have to build and improve on over time. So it's not just about that short term surveying. It's about that longer term view of you know what success looks like. For that's sure. great. That's a great point. We we often say that it takes three three all hands meetings to really see the results when you start to make meaningful changes to your all hands meeting. 
Um, that's in particular with our customers. If you start to bring your teams into an interactive space, you know, the first one, they're going to be playing bumper cars the way you kind of experienced it today for the first five minutes. But after they get used to it, it's like, oh, I want to go find that VP. I want to go say hello to the new employee. And then they get much more adept at moving around. But it does take a few meetings for people to kind of get used to any kind of change, for sure, which is yep. what you're looking for, really, is to shake it up. All right, let's see mm -hmm. if we can do one more. Anything else? Anybody else? All right. All right, let's move on. Yep. I got some good ideas there. Yes, those are great. These were, these were some of the standard ROI metrics that we had come up with ahead of time. Ed, do you wanna to talk to these? Yeah, okay. so um, we do look at cameras on. Um, it's, it's a, uh, you know, when people are ready to engage, ready to connect with their coworkers, it's a better sign, and mm -hmm. if they're if they're sort of put themselves in a position and, and treat that all hands meeting as important enough to be ready for it, we also look at number of conversations um, in our platform, which is like how many people you know kind of did I talk to, and uh, questions asked and so on. So we talked about the alignment piece as well and surveys. So I think in the next slide, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Okay, so how do we actually get this going? So now we're gonna go through our you know, turbo list of suggestions, so get your pencils out. We are gonna share this deck afterwards um, so that you, know, you don't need to take notes, but uh, let's, let's get going. All right, Adobe, everybody knows them. They yeah. are known for using icebreakers and activities. We know this firsthand, right? Yeah, this is one of our clients and you know, they will use, um, different kinds of little activities or push, put an icebreaker up on the screen. Um, even in the midst of a movement oriented scoot meeting, it's helpful to just kind of get that information and make it interactive because we want to hear from you and that's, and you want to hear from each other. And that's why we do those things, right? You, you have peers and it's a little bit too fast today to, you know, build a network but you can definitely get the feel for how those activities and icebreakers can, can you know, put some snap in your, in your step. Yep. And it just takes a few minutes. Ed does this at all of our all hands. Five minutes at the beginning, we always do something and it's fun. You get to talk to people you otherwise might not chat with. So. Yeah, one of my favorite, you can go to the next slide, but my, one of my favorite activities is in my room that I host my all hands in, it's a... Um, our core values room and I have all of our core values, you know, decorating the room. And so a lot of times I'll just say, Hey, go to the core value that you're feeling most strongly about today. And that's interesting because people will go to the one that they're feeling along with other people who are feeling that one. And then mm -hmm. another one that I did, which was even a little bit more interesting was I said, take your first initial of your first name with the first letter of your, of a core value and match it up alphabetically. And that was fun because everybody was trying to, to get around and find the, the right one. So um, good, good ways to use decorating in your room to, mm -hmm. to drive more um, sort of alignment around core values. Now, in this case, um, Johnson & Johnson, another one of our clients, um, they do a great job of bringing executives into the networking session. So, you know, if you're a group of 200, 500, 1,000 people, um, you rarely get to virtually remote global organization. You rarely get to meet the senior executives and you certainly can't put 15 minutes on their outlook calendar. Right. So, and you're not going to email them and say, Hey, can I, can I say hi to you sometime? So, so what do you do? You know, in the old days, you'd kind of bump into them in some networking event and introduce yourself and feel like, Hey, I got some exposure. Well, mm -hmm. If you are hosting an interactive all hands meeting on Scoot or another interactive platform, make sure that you, that you invite the senior leaders to be there. You, you tell people where they'll be, when they'll be there, and you will see a level of engagement that just blows your mind. And mm -hmm. JJ does a great job of that. Do. All right. Pepsi, they use small group discussions to reinforce key concepts. This is something yeah, we do that, all. That's similar to what we did here just now, except yeah. longer. 
-hmm. So it could be 15 minutes or 20 minutes where you, you know, you say, Hey, um, design a, an exercise for our next um, team meeting and people can talk or come up with the top five things that you think we need to do strategically for the next quarter. And, you know, that's going to take more than the five minute little activity that we did. Um, and it's a discussion. And, and this is where you would use like group screen share where you just share your screen just with the group that you're talking to and come up with something that then contributes to a, a longer and deeper conversation. So it's a little bit different than an activity because a discussion is going to be longer. Mm -hmm. Good for brainstorming, which always helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All righty. Crowdsourcing questions and responses. We hit on this a little bit when people were talking about surveys. This could be, you could ask for Q&A in advance. A lot of times people do that, or it could be post-meeting just to get feedback. Yeah. And, you know, some people, I am not one of them, but some people require some processing time for their, you know, best thoughts. And if you just ask a question like, hey, quick activity, do, 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 like go and do yeah. this. Um, some people are not going to like have time to think through what they want to say. Um, and so you can either precede what's going to happen by kind of sending questions that, you know, that you're going to ask or even flip that on his head. You can say, what kind of activity or questions would you like us to ask in the all hands meeting? Mm -hmm. And that, that way people can kind of send them in and, um, it's, it's an interesting way to seed the interactivity before the meeting even starts. Yep. Yep. Always great to base your content on what people want to hear. So that's helpful. All right. Micro learning. This is a cool one. Uh, Buffer is an example. They do something called a lightning talk. So it's three minute presentation. It can be from anyone in the company and it can be on anything and they do it in every all hands meeting. So maybe some of you do this, but it doesn't necessarily have to be totally related to the products that they're selling. It could be, let's learn about presentation skills for three minutes or how to boost your LinkedIn profile or anything. So Ed, what Absolutely. do you think about learning? Well, what I love about lightning talks is it it forces the speakers to be short and brief because sometimes people just go too long and if you make time kind of part of the agenda then everyone knows they got to be crisp they're going to talk about only the most interesting things and that really really is a lot more interesting than uh, kind of you know droning boring okay yeah. slide 27 you know reading slides not a good thing all right yeah. next one next one Employee recognition, never, never a bad idea. We do this. No, that's a good one. And um, that helps you to drive same thing, engagement. You know, you can kind of take the alignment and the results and you can, you can recognize people and there's really nothing more exciting than that. So let's move on. Yep. Uh, adjusting for distributed teams. I let's know this is a this one. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a secret, a secret to, making your all hand really, really interesting. And that yep. is to always skip at least one slide. Okay. <laughs> and he really does. To be honest. Everyone, no, you always... did. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. great. I always put one or two slides in a presentation knowing I'm going to skip it. Yeah. Just to keep you on your toes. All right. right. Well, let's make it fun. Etsy is known for including an opening act before their content and their CEO is often the person who will get on stage and apparently is a, a musician. Um, but you know, fun always makes things more energizing, right? Not every company is going to have like someone who can play the ukulele, you know, at the beginning of their all hands, but yeah. every, everyone has pets, almost everyone. And so mm -hmm. like pet show and tell is also really fun. You know, there are some very simple ways to, to get a, um, a little bit of lively kind of fun content going and just have a good time. Even if it's only three to five minutes, make something fun, do something fun. And, and people always appreciate it. Um, there's a little bit of entertainment in everything we do in business and um, you don't want to forget that. So, um, you know, pets, pets is something you can go back to. Everybody loves a puppy and a kitten. That's true. You can't say no to a puppy. That's right. All right. Adding new presenters. We're going to try this out for ourselves. I hope Daniel's ready. Uh, some of you may know him. Yeah, some of you know Daniel. He's our uh, director of customer success. And, you know, one of the 
uh, sort of most interesting and, and fun things you can do is just shake up who's actually speaking. So as, as we are here to, um, to, to entertain, to discuss, now it's like, oh, here's another person. Hey, Daniel. Hello. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm doing great. Thank you. I love How your you background. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. We have that in common. So, uh, so Daniel, we just wanted to bring you up here to show that it's kind of interesting to have another uh, presenter join. But uh, maybe while you're here, you can tell us a client story about um, one of the larger all hands meetings that that we've done recently. Sure. Yeah. So uh, IBM is actually one of our larger clients. Um, as recently as two months ago in, in January, they held uh, a quarterly division wide call for over 1600 people across three different time zones. So it was pretty large scale, but um, you know, it, it can be kind of difficult to facilitate such large scale meetings or events um, and even less so to do it virtually while still having, uh, you know, retaining a high level of engagement from users. Um, but really over the course of the last year, IBM has transformed their quarterly um, events into an entire day of collaboration, of networking. Uh, they actually connect multiple rooms in order to facilitate having that many people and accommodate such a big crowd. Um, but it it's really interesting because they choose to decorate and theme their rooms differently. Uh, and they align with different main discussion topics that they're going to have. So they're really giving their users agency to go in, get the same content as everybody else, and then kind of choose a different discussion topic and move into that room and interact with people that they may not see otherwise. So um, it's kind of interesting to me also, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but uh, it, you know, I get kind of heated about this stuff, but uh, <laughs> one of the re really interesting things that they actually do is that uh, by having the different connected rooms and having to do such a large scale meeting across different time zones. There's a lot of overlap be uh, between different regions uh, for maybe an hour or two uh, just during that day. So you they're actually getting the chance to interact with some of their counterparts in different regions uh, just by joining at a specific time. So it's really giving them a lot of access that you may not see. So I, I just think that that's a, a testament to the kind of the technology that we have here and what, what we're trying to accomplish. So, yeah. That's awesome. And thanks. Thanks for joining us up here. Um, yeah. And 1600 people times that $40 for two hours is over $100,000 of cost. And so you're looking for a return on that investment. And, you know, that's that's the important thing. So um, but let's let's be true to our word and keep things moving here. What do you say? Yeah, now we're at the summary. So awesome. we'll be sending awesome. these out again. Yeah, I think that the, the the one here that really stands out to me is the um, is the accessibility to leadership, because yeah. I think that's you know we talk about how in remote work, hybrid work, sort of it's difficult to mentor young employees. You know, new employees don't get that same experience, and part of that experience is getting to know other people in the organization, and um, you know, building enough of a relationship where you can call somebody up for help. So bringing leadership together, that's my favorite of all these. Yeah, and it was, it echoes what, I can't remember that person's name, I'm sorry, who commented just about building trust with the leadership, obviously, that's really important in building a healthy culture. So it all works towards the same goal. So you may have noticed this is a little bit of a different experience than your all hands meetings. Ed, what do you think? Well, I would say, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for for experiencing it. I hope we gave you some good value that you could use on any platform, including other interactive platforms. But we believe that the future of large all hands interactive meetings means that people can move to meet the people they wanna meet with so that you can have interactive activities, you can have executives participating. In order for that to work, the audio has to get quieter when you move away from people and you have to be able to share your screen with just a small group of people, the way that you would kind of show your iPhone to somebody who you're sitting next to. And, um, and then, you know, you can notice the spread out throughout this room, there's items. And some of those items have little 
buttons you can click on, like request a demo. If you'd love to get a demo, um, we, we would love to give you one and kind of dive in deeper. Um, you can also just put like links to videos or downloading papers. Some of our learning and development groups use it for, you know, teaching or onboarding new employees. And then you saw the audience feedback. So that was fun too. Um, so we do appreciate the opportunity to, to host you in our platform today. And yeah, this is amazing. I mean, when we host a, a, a meeting after three meetings, our clients will see cameras on in 90% as opposed to cameras off 80%. So that's a big difference. You're not going to get it on your first meeting because some people will show up to their first scoot meeting, not really knowing that it's an interactive and they won't be as ready. Um, Michelle, I mean, this is like most people speak to at least seven other people. Yeah. 18% um, of the time is spent in the relationship building part of the agenda. So you see we have about five or 10 minutes at the beginning and end, maybe an activity in the middle. So out mm -hmm. of a one hour meeting, that would be about 10 minutes. Okay. And it, it, if we had 75 people, there would be at least 25, 27 simultaneous conversations happening at any one time. So it's, it's, um, it's thinking about your all hands through these numbers um, on the engagement side of things. Yeah. And it's that's what's new. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it's a little bit different looking at ROI that way versus how we were talking about it ahead of time when we have a survey or did we get through the content? It's a whole new world. Yeah, so Sarah, that's a great question about hosting a, a meeting for 1,500 people. Um, usually there would be, you know, one main producer and then a couple helpers sort of spread out in the other rooms. And, um, you know, so it would be typically just a team of like two or three people that would that would host a meeting with that many people. That was the first question, which is great because that's the, what we're moving on to next. Yeah. So this is a great time. Oh, yeah. I already said I said most of that stuff. If if you want to be a hero, if you want to take your all hands to the next level, um, we can do that for you in a way that's super low risk. You don't start off with the fifteen hundred person meeting, right? Um, we 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 know how to get you there. We've done it with IBM and Johnson and Johnson and dozens of other big companies. Um, what's making you feel a little possibly nervous about it is is the excitement. It's like I remember when I was like 12 years old, on the morning of a vacation, I would wake up with a stomach ache. And I'd be all nervous because I was so excited to go. And I and and then finally we would go. And so some of what you're feeling, a little bit elevated excitement, that's what your people are gonna feel. And that is what you're going for. It has to be a little bit, you know, different in order for it to be interesting. If it was exactly what everybody was comfortable with, it would be boring. So sure. um, after this is over, after the q and I'm going to go to the middle of the room. You can find me. Um, you can also find anybody with uh, one of these blue backgrounds. Uh, tell them your name, and um, they'll get your information, and we'll follow up with you for, for giving you your own personal demo with your team, uh, as many people as you want. So yeah, it's possible. Yeah, sure. All right. Do we have any other questions? You can either push to speak like we did before and say them out loud, or I see one so come in. Ed, yeah. Ed Alfie, uh, Alfie put an interesting question up on the chat that I think is uh, something that would be great for you to address. Yeah, thank you. I was just looking at that. Um, so that's exactly what we did was we invented a platform that replicates for a large group of people what happens when you meet in person. Because if you have an all hands with 250 people or of any size in person, people arrive and as they arrive, they have sidebar conversations. They're saying hello to new people. They're getting a minute with the boss and then they kind of shuffle into the, to the place where the presentation happens, which is like what we're doing now. Like Michelle and I are sort of on the stage and we invited Daniel up to the stage. And then when we're done with this, um, you'll have an opportunity to come and say hi to me if you want or to a, to a coworker. And that's called social agency. It's the 
power for an individual to seek their own social outcomes that are important to them at that moment in their in their career, right? It might be to to meet an old friend, it might be to meet the boss, but they get to do that. Now with hybrid meetings, we have an iPhone app and we also can take RTMP feeds from your AV equipment for an on-site meeting. So if you have like a hundred people on site with a stage and a camera, we can take that feed and then we can put the um, that feed into the window where Michelle and I are. And so the virtual attendees can kind of network with each other and the in-person attendees can network with each other. And then the the speakers can join the virtual room on their iPhone if they want. So we have really good hybrid sort of setups. Um, another question I'm just looking at um, as far as the, uh, well, how do I address when people don't, don't uh, participate? That's a great question, Diana. Um, you know, it takes three meetings. So the first thing that I do is I don't expect everybody to, you know, in, in the course of one minute of arriving in their first scoot room to be like, oh, this is the future. There's all the buttons. I'm totally comfortable. It takes some people time. So the first thing that we do is we send guides out in advance. We prepare for like those IBM meetings. The executives get prepped in advance. You know, there's, if, depending how big the event is, more preparation is appropriate for you know, 1600 person event than a, than a 50 person meeting. So we're going to um, make sure everybody knows, but even then lots of them won't read it. And so they'll come in and we'll just be patient with them. When they don't want to participate, um, we'll let them just receive the content this way with their cameras off. And then what'll happen is tomorrow, the next day, the next day, their friends are going to say, hey, I actually had a pretty good time in there. And they'll be like, oh, really? And they'll be like, yeah, it was cool. I got to meet whoever. And they'll say, oh, that's interesting. So then the next meeting happens, you're going to get a higher percentage of cameras. And then finally, you'll get people realizing that this is the future. Because think about it, 10 years from now, no one will be doing all hands meetings in static rectangles. No company in the world, 10 years from now. Everybody will be doing them in some kind of interactive platform that replicates more of the in-person experience. They're not going to be having big VR goggles on because you got to be able to do this from an airport. So it has to work on an iPhone. It has to work on an old computer. It has to work on internet, you know, at home or in foreign countries. So um, all of these pieces come together for an interactive platform that works on all the equipment your company already has. And that's, that's sort of what will happen. And so once you realize that this is the future, then it's only a question of when you're going to get in to the future. You know, if, if you're kind of like new things or you want to wait, that's more your style. Um, how do you class as a large group? Oh, a large group of people. I would just say like, where Zoom breaks is where I classify a large group of people, right? So if I have a meeting of two or three people on Zoom, it works great. Conversation is totally natural. There are no sidebar conversations. There's no networking. It's just three of us. Do you know the average number of people in a Zoom meeting is about four? And so, you know, what that means is that that platform is designed for small numbers of people to meet. And when you have larger numbers of people, what happens? awkward silence during the arrivals period. People turn their cameras off because they're not supposed to speak anyway, right? So they, they know it's just a receiving. It's like reading a letter that somebody sent you. I mean, it's, it's just a receiving activity. So where, wherever you think Zoom breaks, I would say 25 people, 50 people for sure. And then when anything over that, it's just a completely crap experience. You know, very, very... Um, unidimensional webinar style, not interactive. So, mm -hmm. um, but about 25, 20. Um, agendas, um, just looking at the questions in the chat, I got great questions in there. Um, you know, we can help you with that. We've got a whole, we've got a whole bunch of content that can help you create agendas for these meetings. Um, we, we do that all the time for our clients. Does anybody want to throw a question out um, verbally or is that it? I think I got them all. Yeah, I think you did. This is super exciting. Great group. Yeah.
Thanks everybody who participated and was actually speaking to us. We get very excited when we hear other people's voices. So <laughs> it's easy to please us. But Ed's going to be in the middle of the room. If anybody wants to ask more questions, there's several Scoot people around. And I'm also, yeah. And also if you find one of those little links that say book a demo, you can just do that and, um, and, and we'll follow up with you afterwards. So those, those uh, clickable room items are really interesting because they allow you to uh, kind of get another layer of interactivity when people um, you know, don't necessarily have time right now to talk. So use one of those if, you, if you'd like. We'd love to chat with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks everybody for joining and, okay. Sorry, I thought that was a big question that just came in right as I was sending nice. it. <laughs> Apologies. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day. We will be sharing the deck out with everybody. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks, Ed. Bye.